welcome to my channel my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review today's review is of another pen generously on loan from Sean Marshall Sean also loaned me his Visconti homo sapiens which I recently reviewed I'll put the link to that review in the description today we're going to look at Sean's Pelican classic m205 olivine this is a transparent green version of a pen that comes in many different finishes and was the pen and ink combination offered by Pelican in 2018. Pelican releases a new limited edition pen and ink combination of this model on a regular basis. This model has been around since 1985 and just last year I reviewed my friend Ron's dad's Pelican M200 from around that time. I did a nib change on that pen and got it working after it had sat with dried ink in it for years. I'll put the links to those videos in the description as well. This pen also reminds me of a very interesting German student pen from the 1950s called the Orienta. I did a review of that pen as well, and a few more were given to me by Joel Terrell. I love this little pen and have given two of them away to my friends already. In fact, as I think of it now, I'm going to give one of these away to someone like you. So, Take a look at Sean's new Pelican M205 and a chance to win this very old Orienta piston filler right now. <music> So did some of you click on this video because you thought I was giving away Sean's Pelican M205? <laughs> Don't you just hate clickbait like that? Well, I am giving away a pen, but it isn't Sean's Pelican. What I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons and some measurements, and provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will discuss what I like and what I don't like so much about this pen. And also, stay tuned after my likes and dislikes where I'll explain how you can win this Orienta Piston Filler. We'll talk about this pen a bit later. First to the Pelican. It comes in this box, which the sleeve comes off and we have a pelican box the pelican logo this is a, a gold colored surface here cardboard and this is brown you pull this ribbon here and this really cool angular design opens up and you see the pen sleeve inside or pen pouch I should say inside you take that out this is a faux leather pouch tied with a ribbon this is really a lovely presentation but don't mistake this pouch as something you'd actually use it's very thin and wouldn't protect your big round stick locked in the heel of his boot a big pen no matter how you punish it a big ballpoint pen writes first time every time it is a lovely presentation though uh, which is perfect for a gift pen and inside we see documentation which has the pelican warranty which is basically a warranty on material and production defects for three years from date of purchase it does here say that uh, each gold nib is polished and written in by hand uh, but that's not the case I think with this nib because this one isn't gold and we pull this ribbon and you know you can see that or not but Pelican is nicely embossed in this faux leather very very thin cloth backed and we have the pen inside in its plastic condom safe penning I always say oh look Chris here's your costume from the year you won as a condom what the hell are you supposed to be and this is the Pelican M205 Olivine 
It was a limited edition from 2018 and matched with Pelican's Olivine ink. The pen retails for around $200 Canadian or $154 US on Applebaum. And it is currently on sale for $119 US at Goulet Pens. Overall, this is a small pen. I will provide some measurements and some size comparisons later, but right off the bat, let's look at it compared to a Metropolitan. You can see that uh, the Metropolitan, which I consider a, a smallish pen, is uh, quite a bit longer and it's uh, quite a bit thinner in girth as well. The pen is very light and made of injection molded plastic resin. From the top we see the classic Pelican crown finial with a plastic dome on top and the Pelican logo of a Pelican with its chick. Let's look a bit closer here. The logo is not simply applied to the top of that piece of plastic. It is what appears to be a shiny and slightly iridescent textured silver silk screen. Let me come with you, Pontius. I may be of some assistance if there is a sudden crisis. Applied to an inner piece of plastic that is coated with clear acrylic. That logo is not on the surface, so it won't wear off. The tapered metal band forming the Pelican crown sits atop a silver clip band. The attached clip is again classic Pelican where it resembles the bill of a Pelican. It is nicely shaped and has an upturned tip which makes it easy to access and it is very springy. It is also folded metal. The cap tapers in a straight line up slightly to a silver band that is engraved in very fine block capital letters, Germany on one side and Pelican on the other. There's about a one millimeter step down to the barrel, which is straight along its length until you get to another, about a half a millimeter step down to a chrome ring, which separates the blind cap and finial which is rounded at the end. The entire pen is made of this translucent green plastic. This pen, as I said earlier, comes in a myriad of different finishes, many of which are solid, some with solid caps and translucent barrels and other combinations. The cap unscrews with about three quarters of a turn to reveal the small tapered section and number five size steel medium nib. The section and the screw threads are integrated into the barrel as one piece from the end of the section all the way down to the end of the barrel. Seeing the nib close up, we see the word Pelican, the Pelican logo, and an M for medium. And there is the plastic feed. One thing I note here is that the plastic feed is slightly larger in diameter than the nib itself. So when you look at it from certain angles, you see the feed sticking out from behind the nib. Just think that's a little odd. It has no effect, of course, on performance. It's just aesthetics. The cap posts deeply and securely, which is a good thing because it's almost too small to write with unposted for me. Posted, it is a good length and a good balance. The cap is very light. In fact, the whole pen is very light, even filled with ink. The girth of this pen is narrow and it feels very slight in my hand. But the main problem I have with it is the section. It is not only narrow, but it is short. If these cap threads were a little bit smoother, I would be able to place my thumb on them without discomfort. But as it is, I have to either write all the way down towards the nib and close to the paper which isn't an option for me, or I have to write back here on the barrel. This grip like this is actually much better than holding it on the section for me. It actually lowers the angle of the pen on the paper, and I feel a little less in control of the pen, but it works. It also reminds me of how many people used to grip their fountain pens in days gone by, as in the opening title of one of my favorite Britcoms of the 1990s, As Time Goes By. Take a look at how this person is holding the fountain pen.
Kudos to those of you who can identify that fountain pen. This is a piston filler, which holds about 1.5 milliliters of ink. Being a translucent demonstrator, you can tell how much space the piston filling mechanism actually takes up in this barrel. It goes from almost half of that barrel is taken up by the piston and the piston mechanism. When it is full of ink, you hardly know it's a demonstrator actually, which might appeal to some as well. The filling system works extremely well. It's very smooth. And with two passes of the piston, I get an almost full fill. Pelican has been doing piston fillers for many, many years. It should be noted that this pen cannot be disassembled. So if you like to take your piston filler apart for cleaning or maintenance, like a Twisby, you're out of luck. Cleaning and maintenance will require just taking the time to fill and refill the piston over and over again until with clear water until you have a clean pen. You can unscrew the nib and feed collar uh, from that section and replace the nib as necessary or maintain and clean the nib uh, as you see fit and that's also a way to get at that inside ink chamber uh, with a q-tip or a long uh, cotton swab if you're so inclined. Now let's look at some size comparisons. Okay here we are with the Pelican M205 and this is a Caveco Sport the Orienta piston filler, a Pilot Metropolitan, and a Lamy Safari. Now let's look at them posted. Okay, here they are posted. And you can see why I see a similarity between the M205 and the Orienta. Uh, this one, of course, has a cork. Uh, piston on it, but the sections are almost identical and the construction are very similar as well uh, The nibs are of course different. This one has a very interesting What we call a folded nib take a look at my video on the Orienta and you'll see how interesting that uh, particular nib is Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the Pelican M205. Olivine. And it has a medium steel nib. And the ink is of course Pelican Edelstein Olivine. And here is the swatch for the Olivine along with some Robert Oster, green at night, and some diamine salamander. Let's check the wetness. This is a very wet pen. Now it's the line variation. This is no pressure, and that's just pushing it a little bit, so there is quite a bit of spring to this steel nib. It is finer than I had expected out of a medium pen and my Richard Binder chart shows that this line is 0.5 millimeters or 0 0.020 inches in diameter which makes it uh, either a western fine or a Japanese 
fine to medium. I'm going to show a uh, photo right now that I took of this pen's nib right out of the box before I inked it up for the first time. It shows the tines slightly out of alignment and that accounts for this scratchy feeling I'm getting on the upstrokes. It's not too bad on the down but certainly the upstroke this direction is almost tearing up the page. Again this pen is not my pen it is on loan so I'm not going to touch it but you can actually hear it on the page. And our writing sample. And reverse writing. Yeah, it's not very good at that at all. It's actually really digging into the page. And some quick writing. No problems at all. That's very, very wet. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? First, I have to say that this is a well-made pen. It is, however, on the expensive side for an injection molded plastic pen at $119 US. That's on sale. But I had to search with my 30 times loop to find the injection molding lines on the section. The hardware is extremely well done. The piston filler is flawless. It has a good ink capacity and weighs only 14 G's. The cap on some of my other pens weighs more than that. It has a quick opening cap, posts very very well and has excellent lines. If you have small hands and like a very light pen the M200 Souverain line of pens might be perfect for you. For me with medium-sized hands this pen is too small even posted. If the cap threads here were smoother I'd be able to grip it normally. My main beef with this pen is how it writes out of the box. The nib is misaligned. It probably won't take much to get it aligned properly, but if I bought this pen from Goulet Pens, it would cost me about $135 Canadian, and at that price, it should write properly. Of course, with the Pelican guarantee and a retailer like Brian Goulet, help isn't far away. Another big thing on the plus side, other than the Pelican name and the guarantee of quality, is the range of models and finishes available. The constant additions of limited models matched with Pelican's Edelstein inks make the M200 Souverain line of pens perfect gift ideas for the fountain pen lover, especially those who love matching finishes to inks. I just wish Pelican would make a model in a full-size fountain pen, say the size of an M400, but with a steel number six nib in a piston filler with these kinds of finish options, especially if it was priced competitively, say, in the $150 US range. Okay, now for the giveaway. Let's look at this Orienta for a moment. As I said, I've put a link to the review of this pen in the description of this video. So check that out for details on how this pen writes. This pen is almost identical to the M205. When you take the cap off, the sections, the screw threads, and the length are almost identical. The blind cap piston knob is the only major difference unposted. And posted, the Orienta is actually about 10 millimeters longer. So to win this pen, successfully identify the fountain pen in my as time goes by cutaway, and I'll, okay, I'm just teasing. All you have to do is be a subscriber and add a comment below. The topic is irrelevant, but remember that I read all the comments and anything I feel is offensive, Unlike the taped out offensive titles on my bookshelf, I will delete. I will randomly select a winner from the comments this coming Saturday at 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I will post the winner's username and comment in a pinned comment below this video and on my community tab. The link to my community tab is also provided in the description.
And there you have it. Thanks go out to my friend Sean Marshall for the loan of his beautiful Pelican. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.